Hi everyone and welcome to the fourth part of this Emerald Kaizo Hardcore Nuzlocke. Last time we managed to beat Winona and a lot of the evil team leaders. Among them was Maxi 2, which is considered to be the most difficult fight aside from the Elite 4. But now it is time to face the 7 gym. Before we do that though, we need to get through a bunch of gym trainers and the gym trainers here are all double battles. And to make it even more difficult, they are all super gimmicky. This battle here is basically a mini Norman battle, Espion is slacking lead and of course they will skill swap. I open with Armado and Primeape and hit a Brick Break on the Slacking and an X Scissor on the Espion. Espion goes down but Slacking lives at half health. Next turn LXM comes in so we X Scissor it and Brick Break the Slacking taking both out. Swellow and Claydol are now in and both will probably target Primeape. So I go for Ancient Power on Swellow and let Primeape switch out for Sharpedo. Sharpedo barely manages to hang on and luckily Claydol uses Toxic on Swellow to activate its guts. Ancient Power then takes it out and in comes Hitmonchan. I go for an X Scissor on the Claydol and swap Sharpedo out for Gardevoir. Claydol nearly goes down as he toxics the Hitmonchan for Guts and next turn we can outspeed Hitmonchan with Gardevoir and kill it and our model will take out Claydol. Then there is another scary battle where the opponents have 3 trapping mons like Arena Trap Duxrio or Shadow Talk Why Not and then 3 other mons that are spamming Parish Song. In other words, you need to one shot these things or find another way to get out. A great way to go about it is to have a Pokemon with skill swap and swap away the trapping ability. But I went with a different and far more risky strategy. I got a Roar TM from the guy and his Puchena West of Falarbor and Waders also knows Roar. The battle opens with Wobbuffet and Lepros against my Armaldo and Waders. The first turn I use to get as much damage as possible into the Wobbuffet. I hit an X Scissor and Hydro Pump which kills it. Lepros did get off his Parish Song, Dugtrio comes in but now comes the Roar strategy in place. I roar out my own Pokemon, my Armado, so that he's free of the Arena Trap. Blastoise comes in and he also knows Roar luckily. So I take one more turn to do some damage, letting Waylord get off another Hydro Pump, killing the Dugtrio. Then I also roar him out and now it's the scary part. Blastoise is the only Roar Pokemon left on the field and he is also on the timer. I just need to keep on roaring until Waydart is back in and he needs to be back in before Blastoise's time runs out. See this is why this is such a risky strategy and I probably should have hard skilled Roar onto someone else. I hit a Bubble Beam and Thunderbolt on a Wyanot which did next to nothing and Lepros is swapped for the Misdreavus. I then hit a Thunder Wave on Wyanot after which Blastoise roars out the Ampharos. We got lucky and we bring him Waydart just in time. We can now get off a Bubble Beam on Wyanot and after that Waydart can roar it out. This makes sure that Blastoise is now free of the Parish Song just in time. Armado comes in now and an X Scissor is enough to kill the Why Not. And that basically won us the battle. We now need to deal with the Parish Song users but nothing is trapping us in anymore. I swap out both of my Pokemon just to play it safe and from there on I just start throwing any move their way. This eventually won me the battle. I wanted to showcase these battles because to me they're the most memorable. The Roar strategy, although very risky, worked wonders. And to be fair, I wouldn't have really cared too much if Blastoise went down. Before we battle Tate and Liza, I remember I can still catch something in Moss Deep City as well, so I fish up a Kingler. I then do some prep work by going to Pacific Lock and teaching Gengar Explosion. Yeah, you know what's about to happen. The battle opens super scary with Tate and Liza sending out Latios and Latias. I send out Cloyster and Gengar. And here, you're about to witness something wonderful. I click self destruct with Cloyster and Explosion with Gengar. Gengar is the fastest on the field and kills both the Ladios and Ladias. But Cloyster is luckily defensive enough to not die and he also has shell armor so he couldn't get crit either. And the way Gen 3 AI works is that now both new Pokemon are going to be sent in before the turn ends. So we just simply bring in Misdreavus on the incoming self-destruct and State and Liza sending Gardevoir and Medicham. Both come in at another explosion and both go down right away as well. And in just one turn we killed 4 of State and Liza's Pokemon. I then bring in Ampharos as Stain and Lies bring in Starmie and Jurachi. I go for Thunderbolt and Shadow Ball on the Starmie, taking it out as Ampharos is lightly hit into the low yellow. Now at a 2v1 situation, I swap Ampharos out for Flareon and go for a Shadow Ball on Jurachi. Next turn, an Overheat and Shadow Ball seal the deal, killing Jurachi and winning us our 7th batch. This gym is incredibly difficult, but taking out 4 Pokemon in just one turn turns this from something extremely difficult into something very manageable. This entire battle actually only lasted 4 turns and with only 2 planned deaths it turned out perfect. Now that we have 7 batches we need to deal with the evil team once and for all. And to do that we once again have a mini gauntlet consisting of a team magma admin battle, 3 back to back fights, this time without healing in between 
a double battle with Maxi, a Team Aqua admin battle, and a battle against Archie. The first one up is against Magma admin Courtney. We lead with Armado as she sends out Crobat. Sky attack does just under half damage as we one shot with Ancient Power. We also got the Omni boost which didn't matter but is always nice. In comes Morganium for some reason and he goes for Grass Whistle. Because of that I equipped Armado with a Chesto Berry so we wake up and one shot it with X Scissor. Next up is Rage Rock, and we're going for a very similar strat compared to the last time. I switch into Sceptile, only this time I get paralyzed. This could be really bad, but it isn't the end. I hit a strong Leaf Blade, leaving the Red Rock in the red, but we're paralyzed, so he's now faster. This means that I need to switch. I bring in Mr. Reavus, as there's about a 100% chance that Red Rock will explode. Turns out I was right, and we get rid of the Reggie without any trouble. Dusclops then comes in, and he's scary, but I have a secret weapon. Remember the Togedic that I caught and labeled useless? Well, he's actually immune to all of Dusclops' moves. I bring it in and set up a safeguard so his will wisp is useless, and then I start hitting some Fire Blast. I know that I only have 4 PP, so when Dusclops goes to sleep, I bring in Mystery Fuss for some good damage with Shadow Ball. We hit it once, which also lowers his special defense, and to be safe, I bring Togedic back in. I set up another safeguard to shield us from Willow Wisp and hit another Fire Blast. Dusclops uses rest again, so Mr. Reefus comes back in, and thanks to the special defense drop, Shadow Ball is now an easy to hit KO. We take it out, and in comes Gardevoir. I switch into Wobbuffet and fire off some Mirror Codes. However, Gardevoir just spams Calm Mind, and now it is getting pretty scary. Eventually, he does go for an attack, Thunderbolt, which doesn't crit or kill, and we fire it right back at it, taking it out. Dust up is Arcanine, so I switch into Dunfen. Overheat deals over half damage, but our Citrus Berry takes us out of the kill range, allowing us to hit an Earthquake. This wins us the first of a lot of upcoming boss battles. Immediately after is that back to back to back battle I talked about, and this time we cannot heal in between, so this is a real challenge. It's basically a 6v9. I crafted a team that could be able to deal with this Deathless, and here's how it went. The first important part is that you lead with something that can handle Wobbuffet. Normally that's something with Will-O-Wisp or Toxic, so the Destiny Bond doesn't affect you. I open with Makargo against Dodrio. I go for a Heat Wave as we get hit by a Steel Wing, and next turn we take it out with another Heat Wave. This brings in Wobbuffet, so we, so we use Willow Wisp and start to stall it out with Recover. A burnt Wobbuffet always takes longer than a Toxic one, but eventually Wobbuffet goes down. Last up is Steelix, so I switch into Kingdra, and we're hit by an Earthquake, but a single Hydro Pump manages to take it out. Next up is the second Grunt, and we still have Makargo in the front. He leads with Camera up, so I switch right into Kingdra. He's hit by Earthquake, but his serve is an easy one shot. Altaria comes in, and I swap into Waylord. We hit two Hyper Voices for the kill, and in comes Weezing. The Weezing can crit kill our Gardevoir, so I swap into Makargo instead. Use this gunk shot, and we can now fire off some heat waves. We got the burn on the first heat wave, so I just play it safe and go for a few recovers. Eventually, Weezing goes down, and this leaves Makargo at full health for the last battle. The last ground opens with Breloom, so I swap into Salamence. We're hit by Brick Break, which does next to nothing, and next turn we one shot it with Air Slash. Magmar comes in, and I go for a Dragon Claw, which crits, taking the Magmar into the red. We're then confused, but I decided to stay in. On the second turn, we snap out and take out Magmar. Let's stop his Kangaskhan, so I bring in Haruyama. We hit a Fake Out and a Cross Shot to take it out, winning us this little gauntlet. In case you didn't notice this, this was basically a 9v6 battle. Now the last thing that stands in our way of defeating Team Magma once and for all is a final battle with Maxi. And this time we're teaming up with Steven, the champion of Hoenn. We can only take 3 Pokemon into battle with us here, and I settled at Starmie, Waylord and Donphan. I lead Starmie as Steven sends out Aerodactyl, and we're up against Gengar and Tauros. This here is why Starmie is so useful for this battle. It can one-shot Gengar with Psychic, and then it baits in Charizard. Arrow went for Fly and lands on Charizard, but we also fired off a Hydro Pump in his way, taking it out. I went with Hydro Pump because Arrow sometimes flies on the Tauros, and in that case Surf wouldn't be enough to kill, so to play it safe I went for Hydro Pump. Charizard is down and in comes Elements. With that I swap into Waylord as Arrow hits a weak return on Mans. With Waylord I then spam Hyper Voice, a boosted move in this game, and Arrow eventually went down. Tauros is also down and Metagross comes in and Salamence is in the red. So I hydro upon the Metagross, expecting Steven Starmie to take out the Salamence, and he did. It's now a 2v1, and two Hydro Pumps take out the Metagross. Last up is Flygon, and since I can live one move, I go for Hyper Voice. We just barely live, but so does the Flygon. At this low HP, Flygon is perfectly countered by Donphan, who knows Ice Shard. I swap him in, and Donphan claims the last Team Magma kill of this run. We can now go get the HM for Dive, and we can also go to Sutopolis City. 
Here is another super important encounter, a low tet. I find one and catch it. I then also decide to do something very risky. On route 133, there's a guaranteed Lapras waiting for us, but Lapras is a pain to catch. I have two Pokemon with suction cups, Octillery and Cradley, so he cannot roar away, but still, this is going to be very difficult. I go for it anyway, and many, many balls later, and a lot of luck later, we actually caught it. Lapras has shell armor, so that makes him even better. But now it's time to beat Team Aqua once and for all. We go into the underwater cavern, and like the magma hideout, this place has permanent weather conditions. Rain this time. There's a lot of grunt battles here, but the first actual battle is against Aqua App and Shady. She leads with Lepros, and I send in our pre-damaged 1 HP Primeape to fire off yet another reversal. This one-shots it and brings in Starmie. I swap into our newly acquired Ludicolo, and two magical leaves manage to take it out. This brings in Dragonite, so I go into Donphem. I hit a Rock Slide and a Head Smash as Dragonite leaves us in the red. Dragonite down though, Shady sends in Raichu. Like every Raichu in this game, this thing knows Surf, but it's perfectly countered by Lantern. I bring him in, and a few Surfs later, Raichu goes down. Vaporeon then comes in, and there's a Hidden Power Grass incoming. Knowing this, I bring in Quailfish, who fires off two powerful gunk shots for the kill. Last up is Ludicolo, who also falls prey to Quailfish. Another gunk shot easily seals the deal, winning us this battle. Now the only battle left is one against Archie, and we need some help. In the other water cavern, I decided to fish up a muck. We catch it and we start prepping for Archie. Archie has an insane team consisting of Elite, Suicune and Raikou. Yes, this is once again a double battle as well. As preparation, I hard skill Explosion onto Mug and I crafted a team consisting of Mug, Omstar, Kabudops, Fortress, Ludicolo and Slowbro. Archie opens with Suicune and Raikou as I send in Omstar and Mug. Omstar baits moves from both Suicune and Raikou, but thanks to its Swift Swim ability, we move first. That's why I thought him dive, and he can now go underwater as Mug straight up blows himself up, taking out both Suicune and Raikou. I use dive on the Raikou slot, and by sending in Kabutops first, we bait out Dragonite and Metagross. Now, the Metagross is known to spam Protect here, so I use Kabutops to hit an Ancient Power on the Dragonite. This actually crits, so that's even better. In comes Kingra, who is now hit by the dive from turn 1. And then go for a double Ancient Power on the Kingra, as the Metagross just keeps protecting. Kingra did get off a yawn on Kabutops first, so he's only hit by one Ancient Power. I just go for another double AP, and Kabutops actually woke up. He's hit by an Octazooka into the red, but Kingra goes down to two APs. This leaves Quailfish and Metagross, as Metagross finally decided to use a move as well. With both my fossils at low health, I needed to double swap. I bring in Fortress and Slowbro. I go for a Signal Beam on the Metagross, and this actually confuses. Quillfish is then hit by Psychic, one-shotting it, leaving this to be a 2v1. I hit a Signal Beam and Psychic for only little damage, and Slowbro needs to be switched out. I bring in Ludicolo, but Metagross actually went for Sludge Bomb here. We luckily managed to survive, but this was way too close. But now a Fake Out plus Signal Beam combo can take out the Metagross, winning us this battle. We do have one death, but it is yet again a planned death. We then do all the weather plot stuff, which honestly I completely forgot about after facing those evil teams. One thing I did not forget about though is the fact that we're about to get one of the most important encounters in the Cave of Origin. Here you can find a Duskull, and depending on its level, it will no teleport. Any Duskull under level 34 will not no teleport, but any over level 34 will. So we're hoping for one that is under level 34. We ended up being lucky and got one at level 31, so that's amazing. Dusclops is immensely buffed and is super important later on. Many people actually think that an Elite 4 without Dusclops is near impossible. After the Cave of Origin talk with Wallace, we make our way to the Sky Pillar. First we catch a Claydol here, and after that we free Rayquaza. He does his business, saves the world, and leaves us alone again. With all of that behind us, we can now start planning to take on the 8th and last gym. The trainers here are actually pretty manageable, of course this gym features the permanent rain we come to expect, but Ludicolo has Swift Swim, and so does Quailfish and Kingra, so we have a bunch of monsters that are able to dish out a lot of damage. Other trainers are also positioned above ground instead of underground in Vanilla Emerald. The underground just features a bunch of dolls this time around. Anyway, most trainers are manageable here, and we did end up losing Zaltu to a random trainer, but I lost the footage of that. Other than that, everything went pretty smoothly. But as we approach Juan, we see a familiar face, Wallace. Yep, he is a gym leader here as well, and we need to beat him before we're even able to face Juan. Wallace opens with Kingra and I send in Slowbro. Kingra goes for Draco Meteor and I go for Slack Off. 
The strategy here is to just keep healing Slowbro with Slack Off and then the Kindra kill itself with the Draco Meteor recoil damage. This of course takes a while, but eventually the Kingler goes down without a hitch. In comes Chaos Form and I switch into Septile. I had Septile pre-damaged again so that Thunder would put him into Overcrow range. But Thunder also paralyzed. Luckily, I came prepared and gave him a Cherry Berry. And now we can just outspeed and kill it with an Overcrow boosted Leaf Blade. This brings in Lapras who we cannot one shot so I switch into Lantern. He's hit by Surf and next turn we fire off a Thunderbolt. When I try to hit another, Wallace actually switches into Swampert, so he got a free switch. Expecting an Earthquake, I switch into Ludicolo. I then hit a Fake Out for minimal damage and Magical Leaf after this. This leaves Swampert in the low red, but he misses his Yawn, so next turn I can easily take it out. This brings Lapras back in, but Lantern is now at very low health, so I bring in my own Lapras. This baits Thunder, so I switch into Lantern, getting off an easy heal. I then hit Thunderbolt, but before going for another, I swap back into Lapras, and this once again baits another Thunder, so I can get another easy heal on our own Lantern. I kept doing this until Lantern was back at full HP, ensuring he's at full health in case we need him again. Ludicolo comes in, so I switch into Quillfish. Quillfish is hit by Grass Whistle, but I equipped him with a Chester Berry, so he wakes up and outspeeds next turn. A Gunshot is enough for the Oko, leaving only his Milotic. Milotic misses his move as we hit a powerful Gunshot again. This time it does just over half and this ensures that next turn Quillfish can take it out, winning us this battle. Now that Wallace is defeated, there's nothing standing between me and Juan. So I do some prep work and with prep work I mean hard skating self-destruct on Waylord. I then make a team and take on Juan and here's how it went. Juan opens with Lepros and Kingra, so I send out Waylord and Blastoise. Waylord only has one base speed so he cannot outspeed anything. Luckily the only way he dies this turn is if he's targeted by both Kingra and Lepros and Lepros needs to hit a crit. To prevent that I simply use Fake Out on the Lepros and press Self Destruct on Waylord. This means that everyone on the field will go down, including our own Blastoise. Now when we call Squirtle I said how Blastoise isn't all that useful in this game and he really wasn't but he played a pivotal role in Tail and Lysa's gym and now here as well, rest in peace. For the next turn, I bring Quillfish and Mischievous as Juan sends out Lantern and Cast Form. And you can probably imagine where this is going. Quillfish has Explosion, Mischievous is immune, yeah, he too blows up, but with Mischievous I do something cool. I skill swap the right slot as this is where Ludicolo will come in. When he comes in, we will immediately take away its Swift Swim ability, which basically neutralizes him as a threat. I bring in Vileplume as Juan sends in Ludicolo and Vaporeon. And Ludi immediately loses his Swift Swim. I can now outspeed with Mistrevus, who hits a Nightshade, and Vileplume lands a Sludge Bomb for the kill. Mistrevus is put asleep and Vileplume at low health, but Juan only has his Vaporeon left. I switch Vileplume out for our own Ludicolo and try to wake up with Mistrevus. He doesn't, and Ludi switches in on a weak Ice Beam. Next turn, I go for Fake Out, giving Mistrevus an extra chance to wake up. He doesn't, but I start hitting Vaporeon with some Magical Leaves. Next turn, Mistrevus did wake up and a Shadow Ball and Magical Leaf combined take out the Vaporeon, winning us our last gym battle. <laughs> what a ride so far, we have all 8 batches in this stupidly difficult game. I'm actually impressed. Yes, we did lose some Pokemon here again, but these were once again all planned. Right now there are a few things we can do. First we box our fallen comrades and after that it is time for some new encounters. First up is Meteor Falls, which we delayed all this time. I did it so that we can now get a guaranteed Feebas. We fish it and catch it. While catching Phoebus, I also realized that the level gap is now level 100. So I went right ahead and leveled every single Pokemon up all the way to level 100. This makes the remaining trainer fights infinitely more manageable, but that's definitely a welcome change. So let's now make our way to Victory Road. Before we get there though, there's this weird little bike puzzle we need to get through, but after some battles and insane bike skills, we arrive in Everground City. Here is another patch of grass in which we managed to find a Blaziken. In Victory Road itself, we ended up finding a Medicham, which isn't that great itself, but is an amazing dupe for the very last encounter in this game, the Route 123 encounter. It's actually the route underneath Mount Pyre, but in this game, it's blocked off by Waterfall. At the end, near the Berry House, there's a patch of grass with some incredible Pokemon. Snorlax, Slacking, Tauros, almost all Pokemon here are viable for the Elite Four. But before we get there, we need to face some more trainers. Luckily, now that we're all the way at level 100, these trainers really aren't that difficult anymore. We ended up making our way to the Patch of Cross and here's why I said that having a Medicham is a great dupe. I found a Medicham here a couple of times but in the end our first encounter here is a Tauros. 
He ended up not being all that great, so that is pretty sad, but still he pulled his weight during the victory road section. Speaking of victory road, the first order of business is taking on Wally. He opens with Meganium as I send out our trusted Armado. I hit an x for the one shot and in comes Raichu. I bring in our usual Raichu killer, Lantern and two serves do the trick. This baits in Vaporeon, but due to the level difference its hidden power grass isn't doing all that much. We take it out with two Thunderbolts and in comes Hitman top. I switch Lantern for Slowbro and Psychic easily takes care of it. In comes Gardevoir so I bring in Dust Clubs. A Shadow Ball takes it out in one hit and last up is Blissey. Blissey is easy prey from a Chomp's cross chop, winning us the first mini boss battle in Victory Road. As for the next mini boss battle, we once again face off against Red, but this time he has stepped up his game. Red opens with a ho ho of all things, and I send in Kabutops. We hit an ancient power and easily outspeed and one shot it, bringing in Lapras. Against Lapras, I decided to just leave in Kabutops and hit an ancient power. It ended up barely missing the kill, but Lapras' Thunderbolt left us at about a quarter, so next turn we just take it out with another ancient power. Snorlax now comes in and I bring him a champ. He switches in on an Earthquake which did minimal damage, after which we outspeed and one shot it with Cross Chop. This baits in Mew, so I bring in Dusk Clops. he's hit by Psychic but his Shadow Ball and Shadow Sneak combo takes it out. Next up is Celebi, so I bring in Armaldo. Of course an x Scissor is going to be an easy one shot here, leaving only Red's Dragonite. For this I brought our usual Dragonite killer, Relican. I bring it in, hit a head smash and take it out, winning us our last battle against Red. The rest of Victory Road is smooth sailing. Yes, there were a bunch of added puzzles, but overall it's doable. There's one more battle I'd like to point out, which is Wind Straight Vito, the literal last battle before reaching the Elite Four. Vito opens with Dust Clubs, and I do the same. I do this to bait Shadow Ball, so I swap over to Linu. He's immune, and he baits in Brick Break. And just like that, we're going to PP stall him. This is a bit of a warm up for the Elite Four, because there's going to be a lot of PP stalling there. After a bunch of stalling, I end up finishing off the Dust Clubs with Lenoon and in comes Slacking. With Slacking, I go for Dig so that he doesn't hit us. But seeing how little damage it did, I realized we could never take it out. So I decided to go for a double edge, after which Slacking takes out Lenoon with his superpower. One more death right before the end. Goodbye Lenoon, not that you were all that special, but goodbye anyway. I then freely bring in Blaziken and hit his Sky Uppercut for the KO. In comes Metagross, who's easily KO'd by a single blaze kick, and in comes Milotic. I switch into Lantern and two Thunderbolts manage to take it out. In comes LXM, so I bring in Dusk Clubs. One Shadow Ball proves to be enough, and the last Pokemon we need to take out is Salamence. For that, I bring in Lapras, he hits an Ice Beam, and after being flinched once first, he manages to take it out. And like that, we arrive at the Elite Four. However, the Elite Four is by far the most time consuming and difficult section of this game, so this one will have to wait for the next part. We're now so close to the end, and honestly, I cannot wait to see what will happen. But without further ado, I really want to thank all of you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.